we talked with Jean about fail fast, learn fast. Mm -hmm. But uh, often it's more like fail slowly, don't learn at all. Do you agree? We can see uh, some examples from this year when Lidl uh, cancelled a seven-year-old program trying to implement SAP and uh, scrapped it. Mm. I, so I think the, the problem with these huge projects is that, that you're not getting any real feedback. I had an experience not so long ago where all the project status reports were good and then uh, it still wasn't done uh, on time. So the old-fashioned project management methods, which are focused more on the process than on the deliverables, leads to that kind of situation where it's like, oh, it's looking fine, it's looking fine, it's looking fine, it's looking fine. You know, all the reports are on time and so on. But actually the product or the result of the project is nowhere near being on time. Uh, so the operation succeeded, but the patient died. So the right form was filled out when the patient died. I mean, that's the important thing, isn't it? To fill out the right form. Yeah. And then uh, so we are not to blame because we did the right thing. Yes, according we followed, to the process. We followed the process, then best practice, and so on. We didn't do anything useful, but we at least we did it uh, on the right form. So uh, if you don't do anything, you won't do anything wrong either. That's not, that's not true. Like if there is a fire and you don't save people, you haven't done the right thing, have you? But, but you, you can't say you haven't done anything wrong because you haven't done anything. Because uh, most people have uh, to produce results at work, reach goals. Yeah. And if you don't do anything, there is no way you're going to reach your goals. But why? Uh... Why does this happen that you run a program for seven years and scrap it? No, but that, that, that's, that, that was my point, is that everything looks fine because you're, you're yeah. looking at the wrong things. Yeah. Like it's, it's like you buy, you buy milk and then you put gold foil around the, the box. It looks very nice, but if you open it, it will still be rotten after you keep it in the warmth yeah. for a few weeks and it, it will be stinking. It's looking fine, but it's rotten on the inside. And, and well, some people call this the, the watermelon effect, uh, that you look at the watermelon and it's green, but when you open it up, it's actually red. Yeah. And I think that's what happened in this kind of project. All the surface things are looking fine, and the inside is not. The results so, are not. You can't eat it. Yeah. But this is not the first time this happened. This is repeated over and over and over again. You're running large programs and they fail. Yes. And when, will we, when will they ever learn? Well, I think we will learn when we stop running large programs and do smaller programs instead. And then you say, yeah, yeah, but there are exceptions. There are cases where you have to run a large program. If we want to go to the stars, we'll need to build a lot of starships and they will require a lot of work and so on. But probably, probably you will want to build one first and then the next one and then the next one. You won't build all of them at once. And, and I mean, do you really have to make this big a project or can you make a smaller one? That is the question you have to ask yourself. Sometimes it feels very nice to spend a lot of money on something. But will you get any return? Yeah. How can you structure your investment so you get returns early instead of late or never? Yeah. And is it about the people in the organization? They want something grand, grand designs. It, sometimes, sometimes that's true. Uh, and sometimes it's maybe a bit more simple than that, simpler than that. It's very, really very hard to cut. 
and it hurts to cut. But it has to be done, and and you avoid all the you avoid a lot of problems by by cutting uh, in the right way, or or I mean by not cutting. It's like you don't have to fight between different departments or different managers and so on. So about manageable sizes. If you can break your project down into smaller, more manageable projects that give in themselves some value, return on investment, then you're much more likely to be successful. Mm. But uh, is this always possible or is it just a dream? Is it always possible? For example, if you have a house that is too old, mm -hmm. should you build a new house instead? I move into that when the old one, the new one is ready. Or should you move in partly? Mm -hmm. But let's say, let's say you, uh, why, why can't you just build one room in your new house? Do you have to ha build 400 rooms, two wings, stables? Of course, at once. I want it right now because this is cheaper. Yeah, but yes, but it isn't, is it? Probably not. Mm. Reality is hard. Mm. So if you define the project like I want to build a road around the entire earth, and, and then someone says, but can't we just build this little road for between city A and city B first? You say, no, 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 you can't break it down like that. It only gives the value if it goes all the way around the earth and everyone can communicate with everyone. I think Scanlink was a good example of building the road in pieces. Tell me. Yeah, it was uh, Pig Jule Hamas. He wanted uh, a road to Odevalla and his factories. Mm -hmm. And uh, they built part by part instead of doing it as a huge program. Yes, and, and each part has some value on its own. So it is possible. I think it, 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 it is often a question of, of breaking it down. Maybe you don't need all of those things. But if you define it as this big, very big thing, I, I, I have not seen a large project that could not have been broken down into smaller projects. I, I, I agree with you. So in theory, of course, it must exist. I mean, if you want to fly to the moon, you can't fly halfway there and then figure out a way to get the rest of the way, right? But that is, if you can go up and down to the stratosphere. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so, so in theory, of course, there are problems that, that can't be broken down. But you, they, if you break them down the wrong way, but you can break them down. If you do it the right way, mm. it's possible. So can it be that in order to get things done fast and show that you are uh, have a strong drive. You say, yes, we start this st strong project, we want to have results first, instead of this is the goal, end goal, and then start small and start planning the steps. So sometimes these projects are called VP projects, vice president projects, because it's, it's someone, a uh, vice president in the company, wants to make an impact. Uh, they know they're going to change jobs bef long before the project is completed. So, so they start a huge project and then they have on their CV that you know, they were the supervisor for a very large project, billions of dollars in, in budget and so on. Um, so that's one theory of how it happens. So do you question your behavior in the large programs? Do you do the retrospectives that are part of the Scrum. Well, uh, you said large program and Scrum. Yeah. So you're doing a Scrum program? No, I just have that as an example. Okay, but if you, if you follow a template for large programs, there is always a lessons learned that's somewhere in stage five of the program, a few years down the line. Have you done it, ever done it? Yes, of course. But what was the lesson learned? I don't remember, that was a long time ago. Yeah. 
No. Well, if you want to learn... I heard a writer say that, that when he was writing, if, if, you, if you take a, a writer class, you will write something, and then a few weeks later you'll meet and you'll get feedback. And he said, well, that's not how you learn. You write one sentence, and then you change it, and then you change it, and then you change it, and then you change it. And when that one sentence is perfect, then you go to the next sentence. And then you do the next sentence, and you do the feedback immediately. Or let's say you're trying to train your dog. You're not going to give it feedback a few years later, are you? No. It's kind of totally useless. Totally yeah. useless. After five seconds, it's too late. Yeah. It's very hard to change your habits. Anyone who has tried to stop smoking or lose weight or exercise more or whatever, which are just small steps in your own personal life, which is about five minutes per day of, of change in your life. And still it's really, really hard. So if you can't change yourself, how can you think that you can change things easily when those things are infinitely more complex? Mm. But change, change, Casimir is really, really difficult. And anyone who has really tried to change, even their own personal self, knows that it's very hard. Yeah. So the ambition to change everything in a company, that is more like mission impossible. You have to change in small steps. Exactly. And you have to know what leads to change and what just leads to... I I've noticed that... that <clears throat> People confuse words with actions, that they think that words are actions, and sometimes they are, but most often they're not. So do you want to do this? Yes, okay. How will you show me that you want to do this? The plan and the execution yeah. is the real thing, not the discussion. Yeah. So it's when I uh, want somebody to do something at my house, I ask the person, often he, how will you do it? And mm. then they sometimes disappear. Oh, really? So is it the same with large program? You said the grand design, how you're going to succeed to do it? Uh, we don't know because you're not in the details enough. You can't do the details, all the details. You can't do all the details, but you have to do some of them. Mm to find important details.